all right guys welcome to the next part of modeling table in blender and in this one we are going to make sure we model the drawers that are supposed to be here and we are going to model three drawers that are supposed to be inside this cupboard casing but guys we, we know that there are more than one way to do a thing in blender so while i was working on this particular one i discovered another way of uh, making this cupboard easy so let's move this one aside and make it that way you can choose not to do away with this previous one that we we did but just move it to this other side i want to show you another way of making that so let's add our cube shift a and add our cube it's going to be this large as usual let's give it 0.45 meter on the x axis and on the y axis give it 0.5 as before then on the z axis give it 0.45 so go to the front orthographic view by pressing one and then try to eyeball this by moving it to the top right corner then look at it from the back okay all right as you all know this is not nicely aligned as it should be so we are going to make use of this um snap to then try to move it to snap to this corner then move it along the z axis to snap to that corner yeah and now we have it it's going through the back like the face of this cupboard is conflicting with the face of this table back cover so we are going to work on it in edit mode so click on the cupboard and click on tab to go to edit mode then go to the back and make sure you're in face select mode so that you can easily select this face then go to x-ray mode we talked about this in the last um, tutorial which is alt z so you can see through your mesh and then move the selected face along the y-axis okay so it snaps to the other face of the table back cover so if we now go back to object mode and leave the x-ray mode it's no more conflicting with the back cover all right so now that problem is solved what we need to do now here is to select the cupboard and then go back to object mode and select the face and delete this face with x when you press x to delete anything in edit mode you be presented with all these options they are asking to know if you want to select the vertices or the edges or the faces if you want to select one particular face just click on x and click on faces and it's gonna delete that particular face all right cupboards are not paper thin like this it has thickness as usual so to give it thickness go to add modifier since we are still in the modifiers properties go to add modifier and add the solidify modifier this modifier gives thickness to any item that it is being added to all right so when i click on this you can now see that those glitchy parts has gone and you can also increase the thickness by clicking here and moving it anyhow you want it to be you can also move the thickness inwards and outwards just like this all right but the thickness we should go with is 0.015 just like the one i measured i measured the turbo scoreboard thickness and it was 0.015 and you need to take this even thickness so now this is what we have so if you go to object mode we are going to have just this the next thing to do is to apply this solidify modifier okay and we can apply this solidify modifier only when we are in object mode by coming to the solidify and make sure we select it to have this blue outline all over it and apply it with ctrl a this means that whatsoever mesh your item was deformed to has now turned to be your original mesh as it is like this if you go to edit mode we are now going to see the extrusions and have the ability to select it meanwhile before the solidify was applied we were not able to select the inner parts of this item that we added the solidify to so come over here and apply it and then when you go to update mode we will now have the ability to select this and still work on it if we want so the next thing we need to do is to add bevels because we need to have a separator that separates the first drawer from the second one and from the third one and we are still going to add this bevel in edit mode so click on the selected item and go to edit mode and to add a loop cut to an item you do that with ctrl r and move your mouse towards any edge this is a loop cut all right and you can choose to increase the number of these loop cuts by scrolling your mouse wheel if you scroll it up you introduce more loop cuts if you scroll it down you you take away more loop cuts so we just need two loop cuts after making your loop cut you want it to be at the center so you need to right click cancel adding further movements and please make sure you unclick your snap icon now what we need to do here is to bevel this loop cut we can bevel with ctrl b when you click on ctrl b it divides your loop into two so if you need more division scroll your mouse button upward so it introduces more division and if you want to reduce it 
scroll your mouse button downward all right so this doesn't have particular dimension while scrolling your mouse but you can impute it with your numpad keys so what we need to do here is to type 0.015 and it will give us this distance between two loop cuts which was beveled now what we are going to do is we need to extrude these faces this one and this one inwardly so that we can have the spaces up middle and at the bottom all right so before we do this our advice we split this cupboard into two all right so let's add a loop cut we need we can do this only by adding a loop cut so after adding this loop cut accept it with your left mouse button don't move the loop cut at all if you make any movement and you want to snap it back to the original position make sure you right click so it snaps back to the original position all right to delete half of this mesh so that we can apply a mirror modifier to mirror the other parts we need to be in face orthographic view and make sure we have your x-ray mode turn on because if you don't have your x-ray mode turn on and you go into vertex select mode by pressing one and then you select the face half to delete it if you delete as it is now x and delete it you now see that it's not all the parts that we selected because some items were in front of the others and those items in front were the ones that we selected all right so let's go back to front mode and enable x-ray mode so once you click on x-ray mode and then make your selection you now see you have selected from the orthographic view what was in front and what was at the back all right so you can click on x to delete the vertices and here you can and now come to apply the mirror modifier which then mirrors it from this origin so if you do away with the x-ray selection you still go back to what you had but at this point we can only work on it in edit mode from one side and then the other side will be mirrored accordingly and this is a very swift way to work believe me all right for us to extrude this make sure you click three or you come over here and select your face select mode select this face and select the next one by holding shift you can select multiple stuffs with holding shift like for instance if i click on here and i want to select this first and this other one i need to hold shift and click and then click so now i've selected one two three faces excluding these other ones between so the same thing applicable to here if you want to select these two bevel faces you click on the first one and hold down shift and then click on the second one then extrude along x axis all right now it's going it's going through itself which is not supposed to be so why why it's going through itself is because the clipping is not turned on if i turn on the clipping here which you need to if i turn on the clipping here and move this along the x axis it will just clip at this particular point without going through it a clipping is always important so that you will not double faces and double vertices on top of themselves so when this snaps together accept it by clicking your left click and then click on x to delete the faces in between all right we have our cupboard the next thing to do now to apply this face so that we can also have the ability to select through all of it like this the next thing is to apply this face go to object mode and make sure you you, you have the mirror modifier selected and click ctrl a or you can come over here arrow and then click the apply so now if you go back to object mode to edit mode sorry you have these faces selected individually okay i think right now the edge that we use to divide this stuff is no more important and we should do away with it as fast as possible all right let's see if we've selected the back as uh, yeah we've selected it all right it's mostly tedious to select this edge one by one all right so the, the best way to select an edge ring is holding down alt and clicking on the edge to select all rings that it's connected to it so wherever there is um, a diversion it's not going to select because this automatically is a diversion of this and to select that you need to hold on shift and hold alt to select this select this and select this with holding shift and alt then if you go to x-ray mode you are going to see that all of it has been selected so now to delete it use x and if you click on edges because this is an edge if you click on edges it's going to affect your mesh and going to take away most of your mesh all right so the best thing to do here is to dissolve and not delete so if you want to um, take away an edge from a geometry without it affecting the appearance of the geometry or the body of the geometry you use ctrl x which is the dissolve the option can also be seen if you press x you come down here to dissolve edges 
it takes away only the selected edges and still retains the shape of the selected item all right so you can also do this by pressing ctrl x it does pretty much the same thing all right so now we have a table top the sides and the table back and then the cupboard that is being um split it to help us introduce our main cupboard which are the drawers all right so let's work on the drawers to make the drawers it's advisable to steal geometry stealing geometry is all about making another object out of the geometry of another object so speaking of cupboard let's just do it so that you get the point select this and duplicate it and the way to duplicate in blender is pressing shift d when you press shift d the face you selected or the item you selected will be attached to your keyboard but it's still a part of what you selected so if you want to start working on this it's going to affect it's going to affect your model because after accepting every selection you are going to find it very difficult to select just this to separate it let's do away with the extrusion so now you need to separate after duplicating the way to separate is by clicking p on your keyboard and you have this selection options to separate by selection separate by material separate by loose parts and we need to click separate by selection which separates what we selected from the previous one so now this is all what we have this is the plane and we are going to start making our drawer from the plane all right so we need to make reference to the cupboard so let's select the plane that we duplicated alongside the cupboard and go to the local view by pressing the forward slash this local view enables us to focus and concentrate on modeling what we've selected so now this face is selected and this is selected if, if you want to leave this local view still press the forward slash and it will take you back to where all other objects were which is the viewport select the face and the cupboard to go to the local view so you can easily work on it all right so now in this local view click here which is the plane and then go to edit mode be in the front view turn on the x-ray mode so you see what you've selected then extrude this downwards we want it to snap at this point all right so even without clicking or activating the snap icon by clicking on it using the mouse um, cursor you can hold on control and move your mouse cursor to wherever you want it to snap to and this is it we have it all right so if we go out x-ray mode sorry we are going to see that we have a cupboard coming out all right so now if we move our cupboard along the y-axis to see the inner part you now see the cupboard is covered at the top which is not supposed to be so because when once you pull out your drawer from your desk the top has no cover that is the only reason you see what you've always been putting inside it like your pen and your barrel and every other stuff so you need to delete this face by clicking x and delete faces all right so now we have this and these faces are conflicting with the face of the keyboard here now to solve this problem you can come to the modifiers property and then apply the solidify modifier and give it any thickness you want to have you want it to have all right you've seen this now and you can also you can also choose to not use the solidify but select select the face select the faces of the cupboard and click on e to extrude then click on right and then right click your mouse to to undo the movement and then click on ace and it's going to scale it downwards all right so there are two ways of doing this it's either you use the extrude or you use the solidify so this is um, a very nice time to talk about scales because um scales affect modifiers let me illustrate this let me duplicate this along the x-axis now over here we have two drawers one is the one without the scale applied to it this the other one is going to have a, an apply scale let's apply the scale by clicking ctrl a all right so we apply the scale here and now all this scale is now one 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 what this means to blender is you have told blender that this scale is the original scale of this object but this one that has 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 to blender now this is a reduced form of the ones that has its scale at 1 1 1 1 1 like for instance if i do this as an illustration one and accept it now this is what blender sees as the original scale of these objects all right so the previous one blender sees this as the reduced scale of the bigger one let me apply a modifier so um to further explain how scales affect modifier this one has no modifier and it has no uniform scale 
so let's apply the solidify modifier to it and increase and increase the scale and let me, let me turn on this shadow and cavity so that we can really see inside uh yeah we can really see inside our item so now this is what we have when once we apply the solidify modifier to this object that has no uniform scale all right so then let's also apply the solidify to this other one and then look at the way it functions let's duplicate this along the x-axis so that we will not distort this one let's do it with the um the solidify there all right this one has the uniform scale while this one does not this is 0 0.9 let's make it one uh this was 0. Point, this is, let's make it one too all right this one that does not have the uniform scale has a wrong scale although it looks normal if i apply the scale to this we are going to have something similar to this okay so now if we measure our thickness from a real life item and we come over here to apply the thickness to it you see what we have you are going to have this uniform yeah we are going to have this uniform spread of thickness all over it and this is just 0.02 to the one that has the applied scale but if you come to give 0.02 to this one 0.02 you can spot the difference now so that is just it scales affects modifiers and also textures so it is always a nice practice to make sure that you apply your scale so right from here we are going to look at this this one has the apply scale let's apply the solidifier and give it the thickness of 0.015 let's give it 15 to be a little thicker all right so now we have this let's go to top view and select this face and move it up this was the y-axis hold your control to snap it there all right and let's do away with these ones because this ones were just for um, illustrations. We now have a drawer. If you move it along the y-axis, it's a nice open drawer. All right. So now we have to right click and return it to its normal position. We we'll continue making the other drawer in the next tutorial. And please make sure you watch, subscribe and like this video and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.